Music gets me so hype every time. I just come in, it's gold. Come in dancing for Goon Files. It's gold. It's G O L D gold. Um, Aww, welcome. Yes, thank you. Welcome. 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 Um, K. K. Welcome, my dear. K. Go ahead and oh, Raven Cloud. Thank you for the sub, my dear hey. friend. Welcome. Welcome, Thanks, friend. I heard uh, I saw Raven Cloud in the a chat. New, uh, uh-huh. A new patron, a new member of our Discord as well. Yeah. Hey Raven Cloud, welcome to the party, everybody. That's great. Ra- Raven Cloud earlier on said, Howdy ho, guess who finally listened to Operation Fulminate? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Good stuff. Uh Kay, go ahead and talk about your, your lovely vacation while I go grab our giveaway real quick. Tell us about the podcasts that you listen. What do you do on your drive? Uh, a few folks are saying we can't hear K. Uh oh. Folks are saying we can't hear K. Oh. Hey, Nitty, we can't hear K. The the stream's not ready for her. It's not ready for K. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Kay was saying that she was in Florida and had a lovely yes. time. A and lovely she drove time. down there. How about now, Kay? Go ahead and say something now. I don't know. Maybe. Let's let's see if the people can hear me. Out Let us know, chat. chat. Hello. Hello. Let us know, Hello. chat. Hello. Is Kay Hello. available? Okay. I see a yes. Yay. 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 Yeah. Well, Everybody now. Mark your oh, no, you can't. Oh, no, 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 I got it. I got it. I'm kidding. Yeah. Well, let me. Uh, I'm just let me... fucking with you. Let me let me take this opportunity now that everyone can hear me to say, Ned, well done stepping up and, and hosting the streams, because despite the fact that I am back, my face is on camera. I'm still not hosting. That is still Ned is doing all the producing and it ain't easy as as he knows better than most now. Um, but man, I, I this is forget that last vacation. This is the vacation. I get to just be on stream and not have to run it. Wow. This is so yeah. luxurious. <laughs> Wow. It's nice. You know, nice things cost money. It's the nice things in life, right? <laughs> um, friends, no more icebreakers. We're going to jump right in. Before we oh, do so, Campbell, please, yes. please be so kind to tell our friends about our giveaway and our sponsorship corner. That way we can jump right in. We got stuff My pledge. We, just in general, like the goons are brought to you by Modern Artifice. <laughs> who supports us every step of the way our discount code goon 10 is still live in their etsy shop that's etsy.com slash shop slash modern artifice go if you haven't already a great gift idea or if you're just trying to treat yourself they have a 1999 mystery metal dice sets and they also have like i want to say it's something crazy like 7.99 like regular resin dice sets go in there buy a bunch give them to your friends give them to like D D players at your table and keep some for yourself um while i'm here i will also do content warning corner which is that this is a grown-up improvised adventure so far featuring uh gun violence uh dismembered hands um uh, tyler hit a guy with a with an rv with a, uh, an atv just stand by <laughs> we'll see what happens tonight but ned keeps telling us that there's no time to fuck around and our hums are about to get dong and so content warning for hum dingers do you remember yourself. last season in season one we really like fuddled around and got an apartment <laughs> <laughs> we got a house i know we went to west philly and purchased a home a guy, remember how great that a was guy named ned a guy who <laughs> was who our knew, landlord who knew what the wood on the floors was. <laughs> but yes, that's my corner. And then for giveaways, stand by in the chat. 
we will let you know come break time what you will you will go to our instagram which if you haven't seen our instagram yet tonight at 8 p.m we went live with Kay's new characters character art made by actually Anne, who does all of our character art and we will tell you to post something on there in order to win the goon oh he's drinking, he's drinking. we can't give away <laughs> <Stick him back! laughs> A in Goon Files <laughs> season two sticker pack with the Make It Mundane sticker, the Goon Files wintery sticker, and the Salutations Denizens of the Dance Club sticker from quote from our own Teddy Booker, as well as the Where's Pasha pin, and also this little extra number, large black baby, extra Ooh. large black Goon names shirt. Stay tuned until the break, and we will let you know how to enter to win. Back to you, Ned, because we're not fucking around. We're not fucking around. Nobody fucking around. Bye, Abster. Anymore. Thanks for hanging out. Oh, Abster said, Ned, please are yep. you recording because they have yep. to go back to work. Yes, I am recording. Also, <laughs> Abster, uh, on behalf of Haster, redeemed disadvantage or uh, advantage on the next sanity check. I believe you actually were right that it was the next that it was disadvantage. Oh wait, no, oh, was it disadvantage on the next sanity check? Oh, oh and that was that was from Biggs Jasper. Biggs Jasper says, "I gotta hop out and cook dinner with my BF," but this is from Haster for the next sanity check. Uh, oh no! Haster That's giveth and good. Haster taketh away. Oh, ain't that also, the sure does. Um, congratulations in the chat. A highlighted message. The beautiful Cassidy says, "Y'all, I made my tenth D and D character yesterday." Hey, awesome! Congratulations. That's cool. What were they? That's actually that's a really that is really cool. I I kind of wonder how many I've made. I don't think I, I, I don't know. I don't think I, it's so many. That's a fun stat. All right, it is, right? friends. But we're diving in. I you all received. <laughs> if Enough I'm bullshit. Not mis, if I'm not mistaken, you all received an envelope in the mail. Is that correct? Oh that my is correct. god. You are to, and yes, in the IRL mail, I did. It's okay, right here. Please, Trevor, before we go any further, yeah. have those envelopes ready. I'll give you about you know twenty seconds. Get. Get it out. Just have it in front of you, and then we will go from there. I already opened mine. Atlas Incorporated, thank you for the tier one gift subs. Thank you, Atlas. Atlas. Cannolis. Oh, my gracious. Wow. We got subscriptions. We got a beautiful half-orc paladin. We're ready to go this evening. Yes. The hype is hyping. The hype is real. Pipe, pipe, pipe. I can hear that train coming around the corner. Do you have the envelope? Because I surely don't. I do. It was in my desk. Okay. The envelope has one for you, Campbell, and one for Trevor in it. Do you want me to give that to him now or do it? Yes. Make sure that he has the, the, his, with his pictures in front of it. I'll go get it when we need it. Let's dive in. I'll get it when we need it. Unless Ned, well, you would know better. Why don't I look at this? Do y'all want to see a magic trick? Do y'all want to see a magic trick? Here I am. (laughs) Whoa! Where did he go? Go get it when you need it, which just happens to be right now. (laughs) Where did it go? (laughs) Now here I am. (laughs) I can't believe that. Did you just? Oh, he clicked his heels. I thought he ate shit again. <laughs> Just oh, face plants God. on the floor. Oh, Quick, goodness. Ned, take us. Wow. Please. We're not. We can't keep going like this. <laughs> Friends. Trevor's not going to make it. I got it. It was a pratfall. Don't worry. I'm good at it. <laughs> Gracious. You much, like, much like magic, Delta Greens is not about guns. Delta Green is not about a bug hunt. Delta Green is not about understanding delta green is about the end this is the end of everything your family everyone you know your country all life on earth it's about the end of everything in your place in it because you'll end too that's what the fear is about that's what this game is about it's not about winning and it's not about advancement and it's not about the best weapon or the most clever plan Delta Green is about the end of everything and how much of it you'll live to see. Welcome. I'm Ned Iannacone, and I'll be your handler this evening. This formally marks episode four and the, the true beginning 
of Operation Jack Frost. Burr. Episode four is now in session. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> gavel hit. It's gavel. It's official. Gung gung. Oh, oh hell good. yeah. <laughs> On a, you missed that, Ned. Okay. We zoom in on a on a on a street in Philadelphia, and then it pans to the right, and we see like a television store, an electronics store, and we see the TVs inside are all showing a broadcast that is what seems to be like the afternoon news, and it is talking about a cold snap, and we cut to the reporter on the screen. Well, it seems that another cold, brisk winter is in for the southern folks of Alabama as they've registered temperatures in the negatives at down there in Willis. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, negative 11. Very, very cold down there in Alabama this time of year. Uh, looks like they're going to have a lot of snow down south this time. Uh, but, Ted, why don't you tell us about the weather here in Philadelphia? And then it cuts to some guy who's like well that's thanks bob anyway if you look at the northeast corner here you'll see the snow is really coming down next week oh for now we have a little bit of wind chill coming from the right we pan out from there we cut to daphne you're in your office and the phone begins to ring I got it. I got it. I tuned it down. I got it. There you go. Your phone begins to ring in your field office. Daphne Crook, FBI. Daphne, I don't have much time. I need you to check your mailbox at the office. There's a key in there that leads to a lockbox. The lockbox is at a P.O. box in Center City, Philadelphia. Where in Center City? It's over by Ray Street. It's not far from you. Also high. But- <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. David, you get... You're... We'll say you're walking out to get your mail. You're going out to get your mail. And as you're walking out to get your mail, you see a weird express envelope to you. And there's no return address. It's just your address. What do you do? I open it up and pull out some documents as you open it up david you find an nda from a a government organization known as the afosi the air force operations of security intelligence at the bottom it is already signed everything is already taken care of and all it has is your name slot left for a signature And there are six pictures, I believe. There's either six or five, I forget. There's pictures there, and they kind of detail basic information. Cut two. We see a lovely, beautiful woman. She's standing at a bar. This time, there's no man next to her. And this time, she is in a suit pressed clean and clipped on her uh on her breast jacket is a cia badge and it says olivia palapane on it we pan up we see just the the gentle movement of lips pressing fresh lipstick together we see her, see her kind of toss her hair over her over her ear as she's looking down at a half-finished martini and a new case file in front of her. Take it away, Kay. Oh, <gasps> you mean this case you? file? 
Excellent description. Here Olivia. she comes. <laughs> okay. Do I just take out everything? Yeah. Bang says uh, says you can call me Steph. That's right. <laughs> Raven Cloud, Baba Boom is right. <laughs> that is correct. Oh that God, is correct. Now right. I will say, you don't have to go into the pictures yet. You can just focus on the the NDA real quick and just talk a little bit about that. Okay. Uh, classified Information Non-Disclosure Agreement, an agreement between Olivia Palapane and the United States. Uh, intended to be legally bound, I hereby accept the obligations contained in this agreement in, in consideration of my being granted access to classified information. Blah, 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 section this, order that. I understand and accept that by being granted access to classified information, special confidence. I'm not going to read this whole thing because, like, look at that. Holy shit. Um, uh, Sierra <laughs> Barry, to answer your question, that is the actual template from the government's website for an NDA. Wow. Handy. Should, should any of these four actually sign it with their real names, they would actually be into a non-disclosure agreement. So don't sign your real names. <laughs> this uh, this series is not complete until Ned has made at least one FOIA request. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, they have in front of them actual NDAs with their characters' names, their characters' addresses, and their characters' um, area codes, and I think there's a their, their name of their actual job position. Don't I'm worry, sure. if it ends up being inconvenient, you can just eat the paperwork, and then it doesn't hold up in the court of law. <laughs> we cut to Teddy in his bunker. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy, what are you doing when when you get this letter? Like, what happens? How does how does it occur? He is posting a picture of the water cycle up on the bunker wall. You know, like it falls as precipitation and then rises as condensation, like that. Like from a like from a like a grade school textbook. He's like plastering a huge poster of that up on the wall. Nice. And we yeah. see next to it a framed GED. Oh, buddy! <laughs> Good for you! <laughs> Congratulations! And and next to that, we see a framed certificate of union, and it says, "By the state of West Virginia, I now pronounce the union of Teddy Booker." And Sammy Carlisle. It's for tax purposes, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear the phone ring. Ring, 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 ring. Hey, hello. Teddy, goddammit, listen, I have no idea how to file this 1099 KK, whatever the hell it is. Oh my god, Sammy. God damn it, we get married once, and all of a sudden you're calling me every day asking about all these things I don't know about. I well, I figured if I was going to be married to you, damn it, Teddy, I should be calling you and checking how you're doing. Sammy, we got married so that I could get a social security number. That was about the extent of it. I'm sorry, I don't know what a 1099 is. I can't even count that high. Are you saying you don't want my peaches pie for dessert? Now, don't talk crazy, Sammy. You can <laughs> oh, buddy. Don't talk crazy, Sammy. Come on. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We call it a marital spat. I'm sorry. I, I just, look, I, I, I got a lot to focus on right now. And, and I think at that moment, and like a tube comes down the mail. I think he has like a mail tube, right? Like up on the surface, there's a mailbox and you can put it in and it goes down a tube and it shows up in the bunker. Uh, Amazing. Yeah. Well, uh, I won't think anything of it. Listen. I've been hearing them lizard folk in the walls again. I think we have to, I think we really have to root them out this time. I'm thinking napalm. If I told you once, I told you, I, I told you a thousand times, lizard folk don't live in walls. They live in sewers. And if you want to try napalm, ask goddamn Henry Kissinger how that worked out. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Fair enough. I'll use Agent Orange instead. Bye, Teddy! Click! No, no, Sammy! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> oh, you get married once and you throw away all your freedoms. 
I might as well got a government job. And he walks over and, and takes it. <laughs> Teddy, as you go and you find the envelope that has been expressed to you, in front of it is a little letter handwritten from a certain please hold holding we're deep in mysteries a Ned certain holds all the cards shauna d cartwright has a little handwritten letter from a miss shauna d cartwright has come to the top oh ain't that sweet Oh, Shauna D, ain't she sweet? What we got to say here? And as you open it up, it is a very formally written, like Southern Bell, handwritten note. Dearest Theodore, as I went through the will of my dearly departed grand, uh, as uh, my dearly departed mother. I came to a part that was written particularly for you. Inside, you will find a check that she wanted you to have, as well as these two ticket stubs. All my best. Remember, your copy of the Dolly Parton Anthology needs to be returned this Wednesday, and I look forward to seeing you in person. She you she sw- she knows I'm just gonna rent it again, but I go back anyway. <laughs> In the thing, you see a check for a thousand dollars, which was a portion of the money that was needed for you to get your GED. Well, hell, Gail. And two ticket stubs from a concert to Dolly Parton. she had gone to oh oh okay shit and for those of you wondering the librarian grandma gail that teddy had from season one she was the one who gave us the on class season do you remember she has passed away we came to that decision and her youngest daughter has taken up her profession at the library and has become a little sweet on Teddy Booker. So oh. they now have a new bond for the old one. Oh! <laughs> and we broke Campbell. Gee whiz. Oh, Gail. Oh. oh. Man, of all the horrific ways to die, natural causes is certainly the best of them, but I do miss you, Gail. Me and Dolly are thinking of you both. And Teddy, as you begin to open up the newest envelope, you see the NDA and oh. some truly interesting pictures. Now, what's this? Is that a- Teddy, for the people at home, would you please show the picture of the deer? Yeah, that's the one frozen solid in the snow there like it landed in a jump and died right there and would you uh for the viewers at home would you read what it says on the back of that 22nd of december 1998 9 a.m white tailed deer frozen solid 22nd of december 9 a.m well that's strange seems like it landed in a pounce and just decided to stay there. You look at the date, Teddy. Uh-huh. And the 22nd of December is today. Well, that's plum today. I was... Now that's strange. What kind of magic you working here, Gail? Olivia, we cut to. As she is also looking through these papers and these images, would you be kind enough, Olivia, to go to exhibit two in those images? Hold it up in such a way that my ring light isn't like getting in the way of it. 
It shows an open field with a water tower in the distance. Snow is freshly fallen, as well as we see a pitch white sky. And what does it say on the back? 22nd December, 1998, 9.28 AM. Contents of water tower are frozen solid. AWC, AWC on sewer to thaw water. Couldn't get closer. On scene to thaw water. On, oh, on scene. Yes, AWC, on scene. As in, on the scene yeah. to thaw water. AWC, would I know what that means? You absolutely would, Olivia. You don't even need to roll for that. You, with your knowledge of the government and bureaucracy, know that that is Alabama Water Company uh, is on scene to default it. Gotcha. Tyler, Mr. David, as you go through the envelope, you're also looking at the images and you come to exhibit three. Would you be so kind as to show us an image? We see a, f a gas station covered in snow. And David, would you be so kind as to read what David sees on the back of the description? 22 December, 9.38 a.m. Two gas pumps. Gas frozen solid in the pumps. Two dead in store frozen solid. Oh my god. So that's like, if gas is freezing, I don't even know. It's a wildly low temperature. I don't even know what it would be. It's got to be like negative 100 lower than that. I don't even know. Someone, someone smart, tell me. Well, David, <laughs> go ahead. David, do you have science of any sort? Probably oh, not. No. I got, I just I got explosives and murdering people. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, David, you know. I'll tell you what. You have military land, right? Yes, sir. Give me a roll. Give me a roll okay. for military land. I'm pretty good at that, too. 60%. I do have a zero in science, by the way. It's okay. <laughs> but I'm, I got 100% in the science of killing dudes. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is an art form. Jeez. Took me three rolls to get that in the dice box. <laughs> out of the box. Out of the box. Out of the box. But... That is a nine under 60. David, you know from your special forces training that it takes incredibly cold temperatures for the human body to be frozen solid. Most people die of hypothermia in the negatives, but it still takes like negative 60, negative 70. And at that point, they have to be caught out there like naked for hours on end to be frozen solid like that. The cold that these people endured had to be so cold for them to be frozen solid inside a structure. But two. I just Googled the freezing temperature of gasoline. Do you want to know what it is? Sierra Berry popped off in the chat too. She, they said it was minus 70. I, yeah, I just read minus 100. Ooh, that's cold. Yeah, yeah. minus 56.8 degrees Celsius, Ooh. which is oh, cold. I can't even imagine it. There isn't a place on Earth, even Mount Everest doesn't get that cold. I don't know that for a fact. I'm spitballing. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it feels right. I'm pretty it feels sure right. that's accurate. Yeah, yeah, it feels yeah. right. In my <laughs> groin, people, it feels right. Yeah. If people aren't regularly climbing it, then surely, yeah. yeah. Now, nah, Mount Everest can drop as low as minus 60 degrees Celsius, so about the same. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. That's scary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if you Scratch were on that. Mount Everest, <laughs> if you were on Mount Everest in the dead of night with high wind chills, that's what these people perhaps colder than that in dirt. We cut back to Olivia as she filters back through to number four. Four, yes. 
Whoop. Hold on one second. We see another brushy area with trees. And there's two more deer in the image. Yeah, they're kind of hard to see, but they're... Eh, they're like down the bottom there. They're circled. I don't know if my camera's coming in clear. Yeah. We'll, I'll, I'll share that. Uh, and we'll, for we'll do a debrief over the next couple weeks of all the handouts and stuff. And we'll be able to show real clear images. And if you're not on the Patreon, join the Patreon because that's where it's all going to be. Secret files do, of Delta Green. They do appear to be unfrozen. They look alive in this photo. They look like just like they're doing regular old deer stuff. And what does it say on the back? Olivia? Oh, right. 22nd December 1998, 10.05 a.m. Two miles away from uh, origination, originating, origin of, orig original, cold snap. Uh, two more frozen solid. Oh, I was wrong. Um, didn't have time to react. So, yeah, okay. they look like they were doing regular deer stuff because they seem like they just froze in play. And that's why K was on Broadway. That's why I missed K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I that, 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 genuinely uh, fucking thought your screen froze. Hey! I did for it did. Hey, convincing. <laughs> it's cold in here. <laughs> About 217.15 Kelvin. We cut to Daphne. You begin looking over the images. Look at image one, please. First of all, you see the NDA, which you are very familiar with, as you've signed many being with the FBI, and you've had many informants sign NDAs. Oh, shit, I've got... Which one did you want me to show? I just want you, Daphne, to look at image one. And then read what it says on the back. Uh, this one? Yeah. 22nd December 1998, 9 o'clock a.m. White-tailed deer frozen solid. And then something has been scratched off. I see that. Oh, how desperate we cut I am. To, oh, I want to do some detecting. We cut to Teddy as he looks at the... Is there a final image in yours, Teddy? Or was that it, the, the four? Oh, I got a bunch. I have four different pictures. You want the last <laughs> one? <laughs> Is that the one that, uh, that Kay just did? I forgot how many I sent you. I did, yeah, that was the one with the deer frozen in play ace. Two so, more frozen so the, solid. Didn't have to, four, yeah, that's the one I got. Great, so you guys have this basic information. Teddy, your phone rings. Your, well, your radio rings. <laughs> <laughs> your, your fucking World War II analog radio. I think now that he's been, now that he's been to high school, maybe he got a wired phone. But he, but he, <laughs> It's still like a rotary. He has like a rotary phone now. You know what it is? He's got a rotary yeah. phone now. He doesn't have like a football or a set of lips. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. He is uh, He is a high school graduate after all. Yeah, cheeseburger. Uh, yeah, hey, hello. Teddy, it's Portman. We don't have a lot of time. Portman? Did you receive the envelope? Yeah, with the, with the, the frozen deer in it. That was mighty strange. Did you take that picture? No, I didn't, but one of my people on the ground did. I'm oh. sending a transport for you. You got to get down there. This is a quick turnaround time. Down to the deer? Yeah. Oh, she... Down what? to Alabama, Teddy. Come on. Hang on, Portman. I haven't spoken to you in three years, Portman. You just call me up on the phone. Listen, I, I got my GED. Like, like your high school diploma GED? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be a real park ranger now. What's new with you? Congratulations, <laughs> Teddy. 
Thank you. It was hard. It took me like it took me like three times before I finally passed the test, but it was worth it. Gail helped me. You remember? She helped us defeat Harry Jack. You remember Gail? She's dead now. God rest her soul. <laughs> oh my God. Teddy. Yeah. As much as I'd love to have a sweet and pleasant conversation with you, uh -huh. I'd like that too. <laughs> but right, I gotta get to Alabama. I got you, Portman. I haven't forgotten. You're all business. Here I go. There's a lot at risk here, all right? I, I don't think we'll have more than 72 hours to get this thing handled. Whoa. Well, I better get a wiggle on it then, didn't I? Take care of yourself, Teddy. You too, Click. Portman. Good to hear from you. David, <laughs> as you come back in from getting the paper and getting your, your, your documents, we see... A once full house, now empty. Soccer trophies still sit on the on the mantel place with pictures of your kids as they are mostly in college, in their Penn State uniforms and other such uniforms that I've since forgotten. Since Sophie we went to about pit. It. Sophie went pit. to pit. Sophie went to pit. Oh, yeah. Um, Josh is committed to Penn State. It's not there yet. Okay. Um, so we see Josh, like, holding up a Penn State shirt at a game that you took him to. And we see Sophie, kind of, like, standing on a soccer ball at Pitt for her, like, kind of uh, her team I'm, player. I'm, I'm sorry. I mixed the names up, too. Jack is the middle one. Josh is the younger one. God damn it! Come on, work with me here, Tom. It's fine. The story sticks. The same. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I just don't want to confuse people. No, that's it. I'm changing the characters around. Sophie's going right. to pit. Well, that's true. That's true. It's just Jack and Josh. I'm oh my god! Up, all right? He got it right. right on accident. Listen, <laughs> Jack is 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 the commit to Penn State. Sophie's at Pitt playing soccer. We're good. Josh is the the fifteen year old boxer. Keep up, Portman. We don't have a lot of time. Let's go. All right. <laughs> um, as you trusted the two this. dads with getting the kids' names right. Uh -huh. Right. Sophie, Jake, I don't Jack, even. Jake. So Jack, 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 Jack Zach, now, and I don't know her name. So short, <laughs> short blonde one. That's when I start going through like Kelly and her daughter's name as I'm trying to get my son's name right. I'm like Francis, <laughs> Kelly, Emily, Aiden. God damn it. <laughs> um. As, as you go back in, we see like a bare countertop where there used to be like placemats and napkins and silverware set for the for dinner is now just two placemats opposite of each other in a table that feels a little too big for a kitchen. We see your wife come down the stairs kind of in a hurry. She grabs the keys to the Ford Explorer. Uh, don't wait for me. I've got a long day. Uh, I, I got to run some errands and and uh, I just got to handle some stuff, you know, with Ma dying and everything. It's um, uh, I'll call you. Yeah, and she I, goes uh... to leave. Yeah, before she leaves, I'll just be like, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave a note if I got to leave. I got uh, something going on. Yeah, that's... That's, that's normal, David. You always got something going on. And she turns and walks out, and the door just kind of closes behind oh. her and the phone at that moment rings yeah and he just like picks it up what hello David you don't know me but you soon will My name is Special Agent Elton Harris of the Air Force Office of Special Investigations. 
You have an NDA in front of you, is that correct? Yep. Looks like it's signed by you. That's absolutely correct. Office of Naval Intelligence took those pictures earlier this morning. I have a jet waiting for you at the local airport. I'm going to need your help on this. All right. Anything else I need to know before I get there? Uh, yes. This is strictly to be kept under wraps. Nobody is to know about your inclusion in this event. Are we aware? Of course. Good. I look forward to meeting you in person. Click. Who's this and fucking then, guy? Cool voice, Ned. I just we leave a note on the table that says, had to go. Oh, <laughs> it yeah. says, it says, oh. went out for milk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gee, this is painful. How has it not gotten better in three years? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> You know, it's funny because I specifically asked Tyler before we started. I said, Tyler, did you do anything to improve any sanity over the past three years? And it was like, whoa, I said I spent time with the fam. <laughs> he did say he spent time with the fam. Fam and shooting range. Come on. <laughs> I want to have a loving family. And I want to be able to kill people real good. <laughs> oh my god. A, sim a simple, simple man. man, Barbara. Great, now pick one. <laughs> I want to, alright, I'll pick the family. I'm a, I'm a family man first. That's why I'm a steal. I want to keep them safe. Good. Yeah, I think, I think I it's just, steal. I think it's just a little more complex than that, right? Like, I feel that, I feel that. I think the beauty of this is like your wife is always going to love you. I think that that's like a given, right? And I think that she's just tired. I think that she's had to do a lot of the heavy lifting. And I think that in in this situation now where the kids are gone, most of them are gone. I don't know. I think maybe there's more than Maybe there's more work that needs to be done. But oh, the good yeah. news is you have your home number, so you can always call and talk to her if you need to. Yeah, I think too, <laughs> it's been rough trying to adjust back to home life. You, you're always out, you're always on a mission, you're always at war. Coming home, it's tough. It's, you know, everything's slower. You're trying to find meaning in what you're doing. So he's. I think he's struggling and as much as she's struggling they're just trying they're struggling to, to see eye to eye you know yeah but have no fear it'll, i'll it'll go insane fine. later yeah yeah and she'll be okay <laughs> we cut at to... least the kids have a good mom it's fine exactly at least the kids are all right right <laughs> we cut to olivia Olivia, as you are sitting at the bar, the bartender comes over and goes, uh, are you uh, Miss Palpine? Depends who's asking. Uh, there's a gentleman, uh, a high-ranking official on the phone asking for you. They seem to be from the government. Did he tell you which branch? It appears to be Navy. Let's just say I don't have them on speed dial. This should be interesting. All right, I'll take it. Wherever the wire reaches, because it's the 90s. <coughs> the uh, the bartender has a, like, it, we'll say that like you're in a nice Hilton or Marriott, mm -hmm. and the bartender behind has like a phone that's right on the wall that's close enough to the bar that he can like kind of hand it to somebody if he needs to. Gotcha, okay. Um, she will, uh, she'll take the receiver and then before putting it to her ear, she's just gonna stare at the bartender and wait for him to leave. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, would you like another martini? Yes, please. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Shaken, not stirred, correct? Stirred, not shaken. Uh, right, sorry. <laughs> and he kind of <laughs> fumbles off. Palapane. Hello, Olivia. This is Special Agent Elton Harris of the Air Force Office of Special Investigations. I'm sorry I said Navy, but <laughs> the simpleton behind the bar can't know anything about what we're about to talk about. Agent Harris, I don't believe we've had the pleasure. We haven't, but we will in person soon. I gather that you've received my invitation. I have. Great. Your bank account has been wired 50,000 US dollars. I expect you down in Alabama within the next, oh, let's say, couple of hours. Am I buying the Capitol building? If you keep working with me, Palapane, you'll own the Capitol building. Click. Oh, I'm so suspicious of this guy. I just got used to Portman. Where's Portman? Where's Portman? <laughs> David. Where is Billy Bob? Yeah. Uh, Port- <laughs> David, as you're as Mort- you're about Portman. to leave, as you're about to leave the house, give me an alert roll. Oh boy. Oh man. Oh, no. It's either going to be a crit success or a fail. <laughs> uh, no. What'd you get? What's that score? What's a that score? 77. Oh, hold on. I have a 75 and I have it checked off and I haven't rolled my D4 from last time. Oh, oh. okay. Roll your D4. I need to roll a one. four. Minus one. <laughs> Or a th- roll a, a four, three. Tyler. Roll a four. A three, a three or a four, I think, because a three would be me to yeah. beat it. I missed the box. <laughs> <Four or two. laughs> oh, That's boy. a two. Ah, so I'm at do you want to push it? Se- uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah push I'm that bad boy. It. Push, uh, it. push it. I push it real good. Go push it real good. Push it. 68. Hey. <laughs> You're about to leave and like you step out and you close the door and you hear like a and you're like Is that the phone? No. And you get in the car and you're about to drive off and you're like That was the phone. And you get out of the car and you walk back inside and you catch it right as it's on the last ringer. David, it's Portman. Don't hang up. What the hell's going on, Portman? You received a call from somebody, didn't you? Earlier today? Yeah. Don't get on that flight. I have a separate chartered flight. What is going on? I have a separate chartered flight and it's ready for you. I got an NDA and everything. What's going on? Whatever you do, you can sign the NDA. Just don't get on his flight. Oh, no! Norman, you better start fucking talking. I got a job to do. I can't explain much. You are not to trust. Are you on your home phone? I called you on your home phone, right? Do you have a burner on you? Anything I can reach you on? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, give me what a second. What about your SATCOM from the Days in the Seals? You got that in your trunk? Yeah, 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 give me give me a few minutes to dig it out. All right. Welcome, well, so Raiders. Good. We just got raided with a party of nine. Welcome, welcome, friends. Hi, oh, everybody. Charmed Fantasy, welcome, welcome, my dear friends. We are in the middle of some crazy Delta Green nonsense. The tables have been turned upside down. Hums know, are being done. Portman, we've never seen Portman sweating before. This you is, have not mm-hmm. seen Jack this Portman. New territory. Jack Portman, aka played by Billy Bob Thornton, aka um, played by Ned. Yeah. Played by me, <laughs> who is a uh, a secret agent of an organization that nobody knows about called Delta Green, and he is tapping our agents for the newest mission. And there seems to be another person that's tapping them as well. Oh my freaking gosh. David, so, give me a yes. give me a give me a, a search roll or an alertness roll. 
Okay, what do you want? Search or alertness? Give me alertness. A 36 under 76. Okay. Um, you know that you don't have much time. And what was your search? What's your search total? Uh, 41. Great. Give me a search roll, too, so see if you can find that sat phone in time. Uh, fuck. It's a 68. Okay. Do you want to push it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, the guns coming are off. coming out. Oh, it's another 36. Oh boy, look 36 out. All right. 41. All righty. All righty, all righty, all Rooney. You find the sat phone, and immediately as you find it, you hear like a dial up tone, and you're like, it's not plugged into. It's not plugged into. How is that? And you see like a. You see like a, like a light turn on the side, like it has a connection, and it rings. I'm sorry. I don't really know how this thing works. <laughs> it's just, does yeah, it have like, like a power door? Okay, do I plug it in real quick or something? Or You don't have to plug it in. No, this is I'm the gonna... miracle of it. Okay. Somehow it's... it's been turned on and triangulated to you. Okay, yeah, so just pick it up real quick. David, I don't have much time. Special Agent Harris. He doesn't work for us. Well, who the fuck's he work for? He works for a different branch. He's not Delta Green. I need you to help me with this situation. But just know... He can't know that you know about him. And whatever you do, don't trust him. Alright, I mean... I'm with you, Portman, but he's gonna know something up when I don't show up for that flight. Maybe not. I might be able to get somebody to go in your place. He doesn't know what you look like. He just knows who you are. He just knows your name. He knows your credentials. I don't have a lot of time. I could probably find somebody that looks like you. Listen, there's an American Airlines flight leaving in about half an hour. I need you to get down there and get on that flight. All right, I'll be there. Be safe, I'll David. do it. I'll be captain. Be safe. All right, you too, Click. poor man. Daphne. Yeah. Would you please look at exhibit number two? Mm -hmm. And feel free to read the back as well. 22nd December 1998, 9.28 a.m. The contents of water tower were frozen solid. AWC on scene to thaw water. Couldn't get closer. And exhibit three. 22nd December 1998, 9.38 a.m. Two gas pump station. Gas is frozen in the pumps. Two dead in store, frozen solid. Daphne, take it off. Fuck. What about exhibit number oh, four? Oh no. Oh dear. I didn't even look at these. I just handed Trevor one. 22nd December 1998, 10.05 a.m. Oh my god. 22nd December 1998, 10.05 a.m. You've seen it. I know you've seen it. The king awaits. Take off your mask, Daphne. No! No! No, Daphne! Leave it on! And Daphne... Is there, <laughs> Daphne, is there one more image that you have? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just jump scared Campbell across time and space. Give me a fucking sanity roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh my God. Leave it on, Daphne. Put on more. Oh, Jesus. Daphne, would you would you be kind enough 
to show us the last image that scared the bejesus out of you? Uh, I don't like it. It doesn't count and as And then what yellow. does it say on the back? Take off your mask under twin suns in the city mellow. Do I find a king in yellow? Fuck. Daphne, I'm gonna need a sanity roll from you for that. Fuck. And you got disadvantage. And I have disadvantage. And you have disadvantage. Fuck this king. Talk about she she met a king. Talk about she met a king. Talk about <laughs> she met a king. <laughs> Alright, the first roll was a sixty. Under. Okay. Which is under your sanity. Under 72. The Great. second roll, which I just roll the tens. Just the tens. Is a 30. Great. You succeeded. You take a disadvantage, though. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. That, disadvantage that... for Daphne. Uh. Did you have double disadvantage? I got double disadvantaged. I think I should roll a third time. I it's think, up to you. You can either oh, roll was a third that, oh, time. Oh, did you already do one? Never. I'm sorry. I'm well, so there was sorry. a disadvantage for whoever rolled the first sanity, and then there's a and someone else just. And then it. there's one specifically for Daphne. So just... I'm gonna roll one more time. Okay. All right. Roll the tens place one more time. We're making it up as we go along. <laughs> we must adhere to the rules. We are making up as we go along. And that was the one. Oh no. Oh really? Oh, oh. here we go. Oh. I don't know if you can see it, but that is a 90. Uh, okay. Dang. Daphne. Over the past three years, you've been battling with a lot of things, but you've also gained a lot of good things. You've, you've now been promoted to, you're the head of an area in the FBI. You handle a lot of drug investigations. You're no longer right in the field getting your hands dirty. But because of that comes security. You've grown closer with Warren. You, you know, you and your, and your, and your old partner Stevie are really close as well. You've now become closer with Warren's son as well. But there's something about old demons that come back to haunt you. And Sarcosa is just that. And as you go through these documents and you come across that final page, you get a glimpse of an old city. You don't know where it is, but you can tell that it is deteriorated and dead and there's a yellow haze that covers it and as you see this city you see people walking and they turn one by one and look at you and they all have white masks on and as they look up at you all you can see in a flash of of insanity is the yellow sign I need you to roll a d6 for me. You got advantage. You got inspiration, Daph. I got inspiration. For this next one, after that last one, after Thank you had triple you. disadvantage. I got triple uh, disadvantage into insanity. The honeycomb system has given you advantage for this one. Thank you, honeycomb. Wow, uh, it's a real roller coaster when chat has, it can, when chat can determine our fate. So and uh, roll... Ned, bank a uh, GM disadvantage too. We got one from uh, Anti B Redeemed One. Correct. Oh! Anti B curse you! you curse me. I'm gonna roll, so I'm gonna roll two d sixes, or okay. I just decide after I can decide. It's, it's here is what I will say. Here is what I will say. Advantage cannot be used on sanity damage. Great. You can I use advantage to pass a sanity check. You can use advantage to pass a skill check. You cannot use it to lessen the amount of sanity damage. I rolled a two. Great. You suffer two points of sanity damage. And what does that look like as you're in your field office looking at these papers? I think that what it is is I've, I've been overseeing these 
drug investigations, which I, I feel at this point really comfortable with, but bored by. And in this, in this moment of boredom, I'm kind of absent-mindedly flipping through these, I'm, I'm almost, I'm like, oh God, what? I'm going through these photos. And then when I come to, I've taken my book out, my, my pages, and I realize that I've taken a pen and I've scribbled all over one of the pages in my, in, in the, in the book. Yeah. And I, as you've I scribbled, suddenly, yeah. as you've scribbled on that page, you look down and it's the yellow sign. You've subconsciously, your hand has done the work for you. Yeah, I and I, I, I like come to and see that and just ah, back up like bonk in yeah. the wall. Pen drops, book drops. Daphne, as you go back, as you go back to look at the. This is what I have. It's part water. <laughs> <laughs> as you go back to look over the pictures that were sent to you, Daphne, as you as you as you go back to check, the words are gone. No shit. All that's there is all that's there is what we've heard the other people on this call talk about the original the original sounds the original right? it, it, two deer dead frozen solid two kilometers away from the original mark the water tower one it just says water tower frozen solid people on the scene. There's no writing underneath them. She's so horrified in this moment. After these three years have been spent overcoming something. And it's like, it's like she spent three years climbing a ladder to like and someone has just kicked it out and she's standing up there looking down. Yeah. Your office phone rings. Crook. <sighs> okay. What Daphne, now? I can't decide between <laughs> the roses and the tulips. They're both beautiful. <laughs> I just can't decide which ones to pick. Okay. <laughs> What's her favorite color? Well, obviously it's blue. Well, that doesn't fucking help us, Stevie. There is no blue flower. No, wait, there is blue flowers. Go find a blue flower. Uh, okay. Um, talk soon. Bye. Click. <laughs> Hydrangeas. Your phone rings again. Daphne, it's Portman. Hi. Have you received an NDA? Yes, yes. Don't open it. Uh, too late. Fuck. What is going on? I have an operation. It's up to you whether you want to be a part of it. I'm not going to tap you if you don't want to be tapped. This one's... This one's a real world ender. But they could really use you. Where? Willis, Alabama. When? 30 minutes. 
Philadelphia Airport. All right. Look for for what it's worth. I'm going to wire you some money. And you you do with it what you want, but there's no strings attached to it. I appreciate you taking this last minute. What's wrong? There's something off here, Daphne. I've stopped a lot of these cases. I've done a lot of these cases. There's something wrong with this one. What do you know? The temperatures aren't supposed to get that cold, Daph. And it's drawn yeah. the attention of the government already. Yeah. You'll be going undercover as one of the researchers on site. Mm -hmm. You'll be part of a team called Project Blue Fly. And your job... with the other... four, hopefully... is to gather research information and intelligence. On the weather? Anything else you need information and intelligence on? If there's something abnormal, stop it. If you can. And make sure to keep as many innocents out of it. I have to go. Uh huh. What's different about this one? I think there's a snake trying to get in the weeds. Somebody tried to tap David before I could. I reached him in time. I I diverted it, but... <laughs> Be careful, Def. Don't trust anybody. Alright. American Airlines, flight 235. 30 minutes? 811. Mm-hmm. You doing okay? Yeah. You doing okay? Never had a bad day in my life. Click. <laughs> I'm concerned. I'm very worried. I'm concerned. I'm very worried. I'm very oh concerned. And with that, <laughs> <laughs> we are going to take a quick five minute break. Raiders, if you're still around, Thank you so, so much for joining us. Thank we you. will give you a chance to join in on our giveaway this evening. Campbell will tell you all about that in a second. But if you're new here, we have a Patreon. We have a Discord that comes along with that Patreon where we are all in it. We are all humdinging and hanging out. And we have a podcast, the Stradcast. New episodes air every other Sunday, and we play Curse of Strahd, our merry band of friends and we have like 70 some k 70 something episodes out right now of the stroudcast we're about to release episode 75 yeah 75 episodes of content plus if you join the patreon you also get access to goon talk our patreon only talk show that comes after each episode but that's enough for me campbell why don't you tell us how they can enter our contest and what they'll be winning i'll hold it up for you all right so You's got the chance to win the Goon Names shirt. That's in a, what did you say, extra large? Extra large, nice and comfy. Extra large, black. Also the Goon File Season 2 sticker pack. Also, we didn't show it before, but the Pasha pin. 
Oh yeah, we have a where's. Have you seen Pasha pin? Have you seen Pasha? It's on where's the other side the of the boy? <laughs> and because we just met these characters after three years, and we've just gotten a little glimpse of their lives, and things are already stressful. Go to our most recent post on Instagram, which is the character art by Actually Anne of our newest character, Olivia <gasps> Palapane. <Ooh -wee>. <laughs> and I would like you to go on there and comment to choose a character and comment some life advice. <laughs> go on there. You can choose Teddy, David, Daphne, Olivia, and offer them some life advice based David on what, needs you, what you've lots. gathered of where lots. they are David in, needs their, lots. in their <laughs> life right now. Uh, uh, Sierra Berry asks for them or from them? For them, from you. For the character, from you, some life advice. And we will be back at 931. Yes, we will. Friends, Romans, gaggle don't go nowhere we'll be right back after this quick ad break and a quick break uh -huh. thanks everybody <laughs> hey guys we're back <laughs> oh it's running our whole oh, are thing we? again oh it did, no, it did just did the, the, the countdown I just oh, did the countdown. Now I'm gonna jump back. right in. Oh, that's, <laughs> oh, that's cool. I'm we're here to learn. razzle you. <laughs> He's learning. Ned, I'm so He's proud of you. All, <laughs> it's all very exciting. Campbell, I'm gonna read something real quick, and then I want you to tell us about our giveaway and our winner. Go for it. Okay. Oh, I gotta, gotta take the shades off. Hit your, uh, <laughs> hit your, hit your underscore, Ned. Glasses. Yeah, hit your, hit your, hit your background track. There it is. The road sign is painted in red cursive on white. Willis, Alla, period. Willis, Alabama. It reads population 119. State Highway 24 runs past the sign through deep forest and high hills. A long narrow bridge stretches across an expanse of swampy water. Thick clouds hide a sliver of December moon. A yellow glow blinks in the midst ahead, a streetlight singling, signaling endless caution either direction. A slow left turn reveals a tiny town. Silvery pink lamps illuminate a few two-story shops. Christmas lights blink in windows and the limbs of trees. Silhouettes stand in the windows of a rough cafe. A shingle calls it Hank's house. A few locals had gathered for a nightcap. Nothing moves. Someone waits on the sidewalk. We zoom in closer. It is a middle-aged man, heavy jowled in old overalls and a thick hunting coat. He does not look as you approach. No fog of breath billows. His eyes stare, watching, empty, dry. A strand of ice hangs unattended from his mouth. A dog lies on its side, legs stiff and straight. Feathery clumps lie where birds fell to the earth. A cardinal, a morning dove, a mockingjay. Now you see the others in Hank's house. They sit with drinks long, frozen solid. They lie on the floor where they fell stiff, all dead, all sufficed, all suffused, 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 what is suffused. it? Suffused. Suffused. Thank you. All suffused with a chill that cannot fall. Jack Frost came down to town again. Campbell, why don't you tell the listeners what they've won? Uh. Oh, okay. Corvid Verberation <laughs> says, Mr. Handler, I think I'm in the wrong class. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Geometry is down the hall and to the left. <laughs> <laughs> well, we sure do have a winner. And this winner has some advice for Teddy. May! And the winner says, Dearest Teddy, my advice to you is simple. Always remember, never forget, that a log 
is nothing more than a horizontal tree. <laughs> <laughs> and that winner is Tre- Trevor's brother, Jesse. <laughs> Jesse, fall, epic fall. Congratulations epic fail. on your win. Epic fail in the chat. Well oh. done. Woo! Epic, oh, epic full congratulations. Thank you, everybody, for entering. Tune in every week. We give away something uh-huh. every, every week without fail. Except this hey. week was with, with fail, yeah. Failed yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> it! So, yeah, I, I don't know if people know this. New folks might not. My last name is Fail. And that's my brother, Jesse Fail. And that is why we are Critical Fail DM. It's true. Spelled differently on your birth certificate, though, I believe. It's it's like a German name, isn't in it? In real life, it's F-O-E. Well, like, in real life, it's some name that, you know, my my great, 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 eccentric grandparents got to Ellis Island. And they're like, Yeah, we, no we, we America that right out of you. No one's going to know what the fuck to do with that. What are these dots above this U? So they changed it to F-O-E-H-L. But I changed it when I became a professional actor to F A Y L E so people would know how to pronounce it. And that nice. is the story of how we're here today. Yeah. I like it. Friends. Yes. Hey right. Ned, is uh is today gonna be a hum day here? <laughs> well and I also <laughs> knocked down my background in in the process. Nailed Tyler showing it. some shoulder Tyler on the stream. Hey, good in a cutoff. Tyler, Tyler showing some shoulder on the stream. Fun fact: <laughs> taking out those Jesus. guns. Fun fact: for as long as I have known him, Tyler has never been aware of how hot he is. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> yes. It's where it's where all the charm comes from. Friends. <laughs> Romans. Gaggle. We, we zoom in. This is a little too funky for me. Hold on. <laughs> I know. We're trying to build suspense. <laughs> I am. I really am, and it's not working. <laughs> no, it is working. I feel. I, I feel suspense. Let's do it just fine. We zoom in on the Birmingham. International Airport. And we see, walking off of separate flights, David, duffel bag, backpack on his back, and he's got a a metal case, presumably firearms, and he's trekking, and he's going down where he's supposed to go. We see Daphne get off, puff her coat, she's got her bags, she's got a roll-along suitcase that she's taken with her as well, moving. Moving, moving, moving. We see Teddy gets off. He's got a thick, warm coat on, and he's got like a hiker's backpack, and it's packed to the brim. He's got everything that he needs on it, and he's and he's trekking. And lastly, we see the shotgun legs of Olivia Palpane as she walks off in kitten heels, stepping one in front of the other as she walks off, and she has a briefcase, a peacoat, and, and glasses. And nothing else. <laughs> and nothing else. <laughs> we should all be so lucky. She well. has a briefcase, heels, and a peacoat, and that's it. And a fan. And a fan. Um, she you, did she you? fucking cold in this bitch. Damn, they weren't kidding. Hang on, I gotta switch gears here. It's not cowboy time no more. It's freezing. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's go. Any <laughs> time. <laughs> Olivia, I ain't seen you since we fought a bunch of giants in the woods. How the hell are you? Well, well, as I live and breathe, Teddy Booker. You are I, living and breathing. I can, I can feel it. You know, I really never thought I would see you again. I, I don't mean I that mean any kind you. of way. I just, I, uh, I did not assume we would. I end don't up take it anywhere. no kind of way. I always just hope that I'll see people again, since I've only known like fifteen people through my whole life. So, ha! Huh? I, I you know, <sighs> you never fail to flabbergast. Hi, Teddy. 
Good to see you. <laughs> see you! As the two of you walk through the terminal, Daphne, we cut to Daphne who's down at the taxi stand. Um, and she's kind of just looking around and we see her and she's like, she knows that something other than a taxi is gonna come get her. And as she looks to the left, standing at the other banister, looking directly back at her, is David. Well, I'll be. Well, this is definitely the best part of my day. It's good to see you, Crook. You know, it is good to see you. You all right? As good as I can be. You? All right. Uh, honestly, probably better yesterday, but, uh, uh it, it does feel good to have you, uh, have you with us. I was going to say the same about you. And I'll, I'll reach out and kind of like clap him on the shoulder and then like, just like squeeze his arm for a second. It has been a long time. A bit. And uh, yeah, he'll, I, I think you'll see like a little bit of emotion on his face that you normally don't see. Like you'll see like a, a little bit of a smirk. Feels damn good to be back with uh, people I can trust. Hmm. How's wife? How's kids? Kids are good. All right. Uh, Want to investigate another worldly horror? Uh, I guess so. Daphne Gamblin! <laughs> Well, she, you, the band's back together again. We gonna be solving mysteries and having fun. It's fine, it's fucking cold out here, isn't it, though? It is really cold. Uh, you seem more prepared. Did you walk here? Oh, no, I took a plane. I I'm much better at about everything now because I've been to high school and I'm married. That's... <laughs> That's really exciting. I, uh, I don't even. I don't even know where to begin. I mean, it's mostly for tax purposes, you know. I, I, I needed to get a social security number to get my GED. So me and my peaches guy Sammy entered into a civil union. Do you know gay people can't get married? They do this other thing called the civil union. I don't know why we gotta differentiate it that way. That don't make much sense to me. But whatever. I get on his health insurance. And uh, I still get all the peaches I want, so it's really a win-win for me. That's great. Uh, and and Daphne looks down at the ground and is like shaking her head for a second. It, it, there's something about the idea of Teddy getting married that's just like <laughs> making her question. Her it's whole, the woman with her... the mathematical equation going on, like. <laughs> Teddy got married, but I can't fucking. I'm just. Oh, yeah. Congratulations! <laughs> it's making me. A, 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 I'm suddenly investigating all of my intimacy issues uh, in a split second. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh... All right. So, uh, all right. Listen, boys. Uh, can we make this out of? Can we get out of this thing? Three for three this time. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that sounds like a particular little bit of history that I might like to know more about. Teddy, aren't you going to introduce me to your friends? Oh, oh, my mistake. Friend? Olivia, this is Daphne. Daphne, this is Olivia who went to Yellowstone with us that first time round. Olivia, this is Daphne who came in and cleaned up our mess for when we were at Yellowstone the first time around. Olivia. Keep oh. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, I certainly appreciate the cleanup. Thank you. 
uh, I uh, appreciate the work and I'll hold my hand out. Special Agent Olivia Palapane, nice to meet you. Special Agent Li Daphne Crook. Huh. Olivia, as she says Daphne Crook, you smirk a little bit because you already knew this. <gasps> you know her age. Gosh. You know mm -hmm, she's 38. Mm -hmm. You know she's oh, that's 160 right. pounds. You know <laughs> she is 5'7". You also know that uh, she is famous for the Eddie Stone 9 booking that she did and won. Mm -hmm. You also know that she started her FBI training in 1984 at the age of 23, and she was one of the first to get through her class. You also know that her immediate relations are Stephen Cartwright, who also works at the FBI. You also know that Warren Packard, a man of uh, 45 years, with a 13-year-old son named Joey, are her immediate relations. Mm hmm You also know well. she's right-handed, and she gets a stitch in her left foot every now and then. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I think that just that adds a little bit of a layer to the conversation we just had, but you do not see any of that on her face. She whiz. <laughs> yeah, then Kaplan will offer his hand to to, to Olivia and be like, "Pal, Payne, good to see you again." Kaplan, it's a pleasure. Special agent, where are you coming from? CIA. I don't actually know if they call them special agents in the CIA. Do they call them special agents in the CIA? I, that's one thing I did not look up. Okay, special agent. Yeah, that's CIA. What I call them. You see a uh, a Chevy Yukon pull up, a black one, and a man gets out. He is played by Jeff Bridges, <laughs> and he walks nice, over. Man. And he goes, Portman abides. Right. So you must be the group that's going to come help us. Uh, uh, yeah, Daphne Crook, FBI. Who are you? Major James Farrell. He puts his hand out. I'm overseeing research and recovery down there in Willis. Oh, right. We're your, your uh, research team. Super Correct. Special Agent Teddy Booker, GED. Nice to meet you. Did he just say GED like a high school diploma? Uh, no, he's no. our general environmental director. So he's really great with weather stuff. Ah, good. Because, boy, it's a shit show over there. I do know no. whether rain falls in a liquid state <laughs> as precipitation. David slaps Teddy on the chest real hard <laughs> and goes, oh, sorry, I, I saw a bee there. <laughs> good, good work, Kaplan. I, uh, I don't want no bees stealing my DNA. Oh. Uh so uh right. so so james um we've gotten some crazy reports uh of folks and animals dropping dead of the cold what's the coldest it's gotten here recently hop in the car i'll tell you everything on the way and please call me major farrell when we get in front of the troops it's just better that way Troops, we go. We gonna meet Come on America's now. bravest. Everybody in. Oh, oh, this is exciting. And you guys Let's get go. in this. Uh, you get in this, this, this black SUV, and you peel off like he's a little unhinged. Remember, he's played <laughs> by Jeff Bridges, so he's a little <laughs> weird, right? And he's driving away, and it's like, and he's like going like in and out of traffic, and it goes. <laughs> This is fun. As I said, I oversee research and development. I'm going to be getting us in a Blackhawk gunship. We're going to land in the center. 
We're not gonna go through the roadblocks. I'll tell you more once we get up in the chopper. And you guys head out into like a, like a authorized personnel road and you go onto the tarmac and you're actually back at the airport, like on where the planes go. And you're going and he goes to like this hangar side and you pull in and there's a Black Hawk helicopter on the tarmac. And he steps out and I should say, he's in jeans, cowboy boots, and then he's got like a button down shirt and he's got like his his like major pan pins on there. But he's like not in uniform. And as soon as he gets out of the car, he, he goes over to the helicopter opens the helicopter door and pulls out like a jumpsuit, like a, like an Air Force jumpsuit, and he puts it on. Oh, by the way, I'll be flying the helicopter. And he like zips it up. <laughs> Goodness, you are a man of many talents, aren't you? Mr. Booker, I didn't fight 10 goddamn years for our country not to be one. I think we're gonna get along real well. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't absolutely. met a single person in my life that doesn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, me either! Or, did we just become best friends? <laughs> we may have, Mr. Booker. Oh, let's have. get flying! <laughs> I like this dude. Get it? Olivia. No. No, no, no oh, the, the yes. Reference, but yes. <laughs> I gotcha. I gotcha. Took me a little bit. Olivia. Your cell phone rings. Oh, oh! Excuse me one second, everyone. As she pulls out her her uh, her Nokia sixty one fifty. Ooh! It's a deadline. As soon as she as she just immediately hangs up. She like she hears it for a second and just like stops. She immediately stops her breathing because she worries that it's like trying to get bugged or pick up a her voice or something and just. Boop. Weird. You receive one of the earliest text messages. <gasps> did Jeez. that not even have a screen? I think it did. It, it just says, call M-O-N, call Mon with a period, talk soon. A- Period E, period H. Call Mon Talk soon. Either my mom hasn't figured out T nine, <laughs> <laughs> or I'm getting a text from Jamaica. Um, call Mon Talk soon. Um, <laughs> uh, Kay, do you have like any sort of like communications or anything like that? That you can communications, roll. communications. Uh, let's see. I have. What are things that could sort of fall in that purview? Yeah. What, what? What? You tell me what you could roll to figure out what that text message says. Uh, military science land, maybe. Um, sure. Give me that. Yeah. You know. You know, like uh, Morse code and stuff like that. Let's see if you know short script. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just taking a quick check to see. I don't have anything in SIGINT, so I think that's probably the closest thing I have. Okay. Military science land. That is a success. 49 under 53. You know that Mon would refer to call monitored. Mm, okay. It would it would refer to somebody was tapping the line. Mm-hmm. Um, Careful. Talk soon. Jeez. And then you notice that the last three are actually initials. Mm-hmm. And what were those initials again? A-E-H, did you say? A E H. Call Mon. If you dropped the A, I'm going to give it to you because it, because we're going to go through a lot of information. You know okay. that A E H is Agent Elton Harris. Uh, oh. Uh, hmm. hmm. Okay. Who is this fucking guy? Come on. You don't know. Uh, shit. Okay. Yeah. I think. Um. Yeah. She just. She just receives that and just like, you know, fold it back in her memory, 
just puts her phone away. We get in the helicopter, and as soon as you get in the helicopter... I don't suppose you have one of those flight suits in a double zero, do you? Oh, this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy... I can't quite it... tell what our shit, what our relationship <laughs> is going to be like. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Jeff Bridges in... in 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 old man fashion is like sweetheart they come in large <laughs> and all size <laughs> hmm I'll take a large I guess <laughs> anything to not be everybody so <laughs> Any, as long as I still stand out <laughs> <laughs> the fact that Daphne was just like this bitch <laughs> is telling to the relationship development mm-hmm, going on here. Mm-hmm. We suddenly hear we hear the propellers going up, and he hands each of you in the inside. It's like it's like straight out of Black Hawk Down. He hands each of you a headset so that you can put it on, so that you can hear each other speak over the loud propellers of the Black Hawk helicopter. Control Tower, this is Major James Farrell, ready for liftoff. Uh, Roger that, James Farrell. This is Control Tower. You are clear for takeoff on runway 354. Please make your ascent now. Roger that. Taking off. And he like lifts the joystick and you feel like a like a jolt as the helicopter and starts going. I do not love being in the air. I do not love it. <laughs> David, you are you are in your element. You could take a nap on this fucking thing. You oh, have yeah. been in so many Black Hawk helicopters, you've lost count. I imagine David's leg is hanging over the side of the nice. open door as nice. they're flying over Alabama, heading toward Willis. You guys are cruising at a pretty high altitude. I'm going to say like 15,000 feet. You guys are up there. Everything looks small as you leave Birmingham. You see rolling hills, trees, lakes. As you head to the northwest area of the state. About two hours ago, the National Guard was deployed to the bar- to the borders of the area of Willis. There's about 85 troops. We have about five blockades set up. One to the west, the north, the east, and the southern border of the, of the town. Now, those are my boys. That's the National Guard. There are three special forces units in joining with them to make sure nothing goes south. They've been called in from overseas. Last minute effort. My team is a group of 16 pararescue troopers. Our job is to pull people out if we find any. And if we find any research equipment or anything that doesn't belong there, my job is to get it out of there. If you need anything and you need it quick, you can come to me. I have the requisitions and I have the manpower to get you what you need done. Oversight of this operation is Special Agent Elton Harris, Air Force Office of Special Investigation. If we find any personnel, if we find anything that is compromising to the United States of America, we are to report it directly to him. I repeat, he has oversight on the operation. However, our job, our blue fly teams and you as the researchers, our job is to pull out all information that we can find. And if anybody's left alive, get him out of there. Are you saying 
that everybody in Willis has either been evacuated, is dead, or is about to be. Ma'am, everybody in the town of Willis is frozen solid like a fucking popsicle. There are no survivors within the town's limits. Oh, shit. I hope they're cherry flavored. <laughs> you son of a gun. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> With that, he turns to his, like, co-pilot, who you guys haven't really noticed until now because you've been so focused on information and getting kind of, like, your, your bearings. And he goes... Master Sergeant Hardy! Light him up! And as you're flying, he goes... And you see flashers on the front of the helicopter, and they light up. David... Give me a roll real quick. Anybody who has military, like military land or any sort of like military investigation, anything like that. Not I, said the Teddy. Uh, Teddy, Teddy gets inspiration. Oh, Teddy, uh, if you want to try. <laughs> See, I didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 67 over 60 for me. Okay. Olivia, you got it though? I did, 29 under 53. You know that he is doing um, call signs. He's doing signs to let them know that he's coming. Gotcha. And as you look I've been in a Black Hawk before, I think. To the front of the helicopter, you see something unworldly. Oh. As you are flying from this greener, kind of like wintry scene, bayous and rivers that aren't frozen over or anything like that you come flying forward and you see a swath of like 10 kilometers that looks like it was hit by a bomb of ice every tree is frozen every body of water is white you see no electricity and as you fly over with this white cloud cover and in a weird way like dissipates as it goes farther out so there's like sun and 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 like blue skies and other areas you're flying and a couple clouds but this area is overcast with like a couple of patches but it looks like it's focused on that area yeah but as you begin flying in as you look down, you note the blockade. And you see Humvees on the ground on the major roadways leading into Willis. And as you fly and the flashers go off, you see on the ground this big light, this like spotlight go. And then it fades out. As Major James Farrell, in all his bridges glory, goes, hold on to your butts! And he just goes, and, and leans the <laughs> helicopter in as it's wow, And brings you guys in for a landing on the ground in Willis, Alabama. helicopter begins to die down and as you guys dismount you realize that there is like a foot and a half of snow on the ground you jump into it olivia maybe you wait a second as you realize maybe your feet aren't proper the footwear aren't proper I think I probably would have like a go bag that might yeah. have some like winter gear in it. But to do you one better, uh, Major James Farrell's like, here, 
I always keep an extra pair. And he, he grabs a pair of, like, most size fits combat boots, <laughs> and he hands them to you with a pair of socks. Huh, yeah, you know, you don't look like a women's eight and a half, but eh, I'll do for now. The tunes are changing around us. Loading. But yeah, I should have a I should have a chat with you about what I think could be in my go bag. Ooh. Oh, what like is it? Is it snacks? <laughs> well, uh, I I'd, um I have some prescription snacks. Like Nutrigrain bars. <laughs> 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 Think, uh, think behind the counter. Oh, fruit by the foot. Apricot. <laughs> apes, real, apes. real apes. <laughs> you look like a mom. Do you snacks? <laughs> As you come in, if everybody will look to their screen. <gasps> screen screen or the stream screen? <laughs> I have so many screens. Too many screens. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh. oh, there's Willis. Crow Lake. Okay. Oh, a second. Wait Zooming for it to get all back around. I'm getting. Fade, I'm new fade. with the. Okay. You see the map that I have before you here. Cool. The map shows what is actually going on here in the operation. You see Willis at the dead center. You see Russellville to the east. You see the Weather Watcher HQ and camp. You see Roadblock 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. You see that every major area into town is blocked off. So this is sort of the center of the polar vortex, so to speak. It would seem it, it would you would assume so, Ted. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. it would seem that that is what's going on here. Mm -hmm. He hands you each. He goes, "Here's a map of our location, and underneath it, you'll see there." And he points to it. That there is a more centralized map of Willis. Now, you're going to want to familiarize yourself with the area there because, well, there's a lot to look at and we don't have a lot of time. Now, yes, Miss Crook, you have a question. Yeah. What I'm looking at and I'll pull a pen out of my pocket and hand it to him. S can you circle the affected area? And then at, when he's done drawing that, I'm just going to point right in the very center. What is right there? Uh, well, it would seem that right there in the dead center is... Uh, oh, it's close to the Parker home, but... There's not much right in the dead center there. But this area here, and he points to the, to like Willis itself. Mm -hmm. And then he draws that like 10 kilometer thing that you see in the circle. He draws that entirely and he goes, and he points at it with the pen. That right there is a dead zone. There's nothing alive in it. Crows, deer, animals, people. Hell, the fucking gasoline's frozen solid. Is it colder than the other areas surrounding? Does it feel like there's an epicenter and on the way out it's getting warmer? Or does it or is it this whole area? That's the crazy part, miss. What's it feel like right now? And it dawns on you. That right now? It feels like it's 42 degrees. The 
temperature currently is like right above freezing. Cold enough that nothing is thawing out. But it's not the temperature that it would take to completely freeze everything in sight. Does it get colder as you as you head inwards? Oh. Does it come overnight? I don't have any more information on it. You're going to have to go talk to, well, Special Agent Harris is probably waiting for all of us. Yeah. All right, Sergeant Hardy, come with me. Let's get these kids into their mama. And starts, like, walking (laughs) (laughs) toward the Weather Watcher HQ camp on your map. And as you walk in, you see a group of people. You see some other researchers and some other doctors that are there. Some of them are looking at slides under a microscope. Others are looking at papers and like going through like data. This is a widespread operation. And Daphne, when you walk in, You and Olivia clock each other. Give me a bureaucracy roll. Ooh. Both of us? Yeah. Ooh, okay, not see. great at these, but I'm not terrible. Oh, actually, no, I am terrible at these. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck. Awesome. I got a 22 under 40. Great. Dang. 62 over 10. <laughs> no chance. Um, Olivia, you you're aware that there's there's a lot of money that's into this to have this kind of setup right out of the gate right yeah so it takes a lot you know you work for the CIA there's there's a lot of paperwork that goes into getting this kind of resources this quickly Daphne you know that this is behind the government's back you know that whoever pulled this kind of intelligence, this kind of monetary value, this kind these this kind of personnel is working for a black ops group that this was all pulled together in a matter of hours and that there is no budget that they were like this needs to get done, it needs to get done now. Here's your empty check, make it happen. Which you know sometimes is just the way that government works. Somebody knows somebody higher up in the office. It doesn't usually hap- happen with the FBI because they're pretty shoot by the hip. Um, but you start hearing special agent of the Air Force. You had a pararescue special forces pick you up. You know there's some top brass involved in this. I do a little scan. Yeah, of course. Give me a search. And roll. Any ladies in here? Yes. I'm one. There's me. <laughs> I found one. <laughs> Check. <laughs> you see two. You see a Aaliyah Dempsey. 45 and you see her with a badge that says doctor and she is running she has a microscope and she is also looking at paperwork that looks to be like particles maybe there's a you know that there's like a lot of spheres moving around an object you see like you see like some kind of math equations being written do you have a science role sure hmm no i have zero percent in science i've got forensics okay you can tell that she has some sort of like some sort of doctorate in something uh-huh. 
and you see a Paul, a Dr. Paula Bimmel. Now she's a little older, she's 61. And you see her looking at, she's standing back and she's looking at this big board of information, all this gathered information, and she's just looking at it all. Okay. I will walk up to Paula. Mm -hmm. And I'll just uh, come up next to her and just stand next to her and look at this board and then give her a little tap. Oh! I'm so sorry, I didn't see you there. Oh, no, that's all right. Uh, no, you were deep in thought. You're working. Um, <laughs> hi. I've never seen anything like this. I'm Dr. Paula Bimbo. Hi, it's Daphne Crook, FBI. Uh, wow, you sound like you've come from far away. This is this is intense. You sound it like is. you're from London. <laughs> <laughs> right, who's he? Uh, gee, this is Teddy. He just got his GED. I did, I did. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations, young man, on basic multiplication. Water uh, moves from the surface of the ocean as condensation. Oh, you're still talking. <laughs> right. Teddy, give us a second. Okay, you got it. Right. Wow. If I were you, I, mean... I might not be flashing around the fact that you're FBI. Oh. As uh -huh. we're all not what we seem. Wink. Got you. Did she say wink or did she? <laughs> As she and says, she says wink. <laughs> wink. She says wink without winking. She goes, yeah, wink. she goes, wink. <laughs> As Stupid, she says, joke. wink. Cut that. No. <laughs> I'm gonna, this is live. I'm just going to, this might result in nothing. As she says, none of us are what we seem, wink. I'm going to do a quick scan of her person. Any identifying marks. She's got a button that said, you know, I, I'm now I'm none of us are what we seem. I, I want I want to try and gather as much as I can from her. Um, so I'm like, I think I think you telling me all that info means I've clocked her age. I've clocked her accent. Um, I'm I'm looking at her clothing. I'm looking for any idea, a badge that tell, tells me anything more about her, where she's coming from. You see, she has a badge on her. Um, and it says Blue Fly Group Clearance Secret and it says Designation Researcher mm -hmm. but it doesn't say anything about what researcher she is or what kind of you know what I mean like Everybody's so this is Blue Fly. Blue Fly is a conglomerate of of talented motherfuckers. Yeah. Who have That's been... That's what you're gathering. You're gathering uh -huh. that everybody here is part of the Blue Fly researcher group. Um, unless otherwise stated, right? Unless they have like a different badge that says something else on it. But most of the researchers are all in this kind of thing of, they're here to figure out what is happening. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, we're still in the information gathering stage. We don't know what happened. And so they're trying to figure out what happened so that they can come up with a solution for what happened. Okay. So uh, clocking that, I'll go back to looking at her board and I'll be like, uh, we just touched down. Um, well, aren't you, you in wanna... for a surprise? Yeah. Uh, you won't catch me up on anything? I am I mean, what is... And I figure she's got a, a map up on her board. I'm going to walk over and point to, like, right the center of the map. I'm, where is this... Is this starting somewhere? Who was the first victim? When did this start? All we know is that... At 11.05 p.m. It got very cold. When? Well, how many days would... ago? Well, it started on the 21st. And then it turned... The 22nd is when it got bad. The 22nd. At 9 a.m.? No. Oh. The 21st. It happened at 11. There was more snowfall. The water froze very quickly. No fatalities. 
on the 22nd. That's when hell froze over. On the 22nd. At 1.48 a.m. Our, our instruments have never recorded anything that cold. Negative 103 Celsius. Negative 103 Celsius. Ms. Did Crook. you see a, was there a storm front? Did anybody clock a storm front coming in or come out of nowhere? It happened in a matter of seconds. Now I should say, I have my masters from Cambridge. I have my doctorate all three of them from Oxford. And I've worked with nuclear particles and physics my almost my entire life. There's nothing on Earth that explains that drop in cold that quickly. So there must be something else going on here. Dr. Uh, Dempsey over there, she's an astrophysicist and particle physicist. The only thing that registers that cold is things in space. Asteroids, perhaps. Things on the moon. It doesn't make any sense. Because the atmosphere... I'm sorry. Miss Crook, what is the highest education you have? I mean, I've got a degree in sociology from St. Joseph's University and a bunch of years on the, on the Bureau. Okay. I'm really going to have to dumb this down. You're going to have to give me a moment. Yep, uh, I'm standing by. <laughs> in space there is no oh, oxygen and there is no atmosphere and there is no gravity there's nothing it is incredibly cold if you were to be out in space you would slowly congeal and freeze solid that is how cold it is it was colder in this spot on Earth by about 10 times. It was then 10 times space? that cold. In that singular area, in our atmosphere, on the ground, at 1.48 a.m. Hold on. So it was as cold as it was in space on Earth? Is yes. Yes. Uh, colder than that, Mr. Booker. Colder. Has it gotten that cold again since? No. No. It happened for about an hour. It happened for about an hour and then... You noticed any patterns? Does it As you ask certain... that, mm -hmm. as you ask if you noticed any patterns, the door swings open and in walks... This guy. Elton John. Elton John. Elton John. <laughs> no. It's just In Elton walks... Harris, but he's wearing a bejeweled cape. In walks a man played by Javier Bardem. Oh, Ooh. boy. Uh, and he is in a like black, like special forces outfit and he has his he's got like captain lapels like he's high ranking and he walks in and he's flanked by like special forces david you know these guys are trained to kill that's like part of their only purpose like on earth is to drop people and you can see it just by looking at them because they, they sit with their hands like they have their guns strapped and they got their hand like off the trigger but they've got another hand like over it. It's almost like their assault rifle is part of their being. It's almost like a part of them. And they're just comfortable as they kind of walk in and they post up and they kind of scan the room. And Special a Agent Elton Harris walks in and goes, Ah! Oh, well, it's good to see you all. Olivia, nice of you to join us. I Everyone. Like Olivia, I feel like Olivia has just like, at some point, surreptitiously grabbed like a white coat off a hook somewhere and is just like, has just donned it. Yeah. Just to try to blend in. Nice. 
Um, Olivia, nice of you to join us. Everyone, I'm Special Agent Elton Harris. For those of you who know me, you know that you are to report directly to me if you find anything that is out of the ordinary. For the four of you that are new here, hello. If you need anything, Major James Farrell will be your first on point, and if you need any requisitions, you can ask him for those things. If you find anything out of the ordinary or anything that is a compromising factor to the United States' integrity or its intelligence or the well-being of its people, you are to come directly to me. Is that clear? Uh, sure. Can I come directly to you about something right now? Yes. Where are we staying while we're in town? Where are you staying? Most likely, unless you've reserved the Hilton of the Marriott, as they are fully booked. You'll be staying in our boarding area. We have many cots set up. Does anybody else have any questions? No? Great. I'm sure I will. Which state of matter? Never, no. No, God damn it. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Sierra Olivia, Barry, just, uh, Sierra Barry up, says, I feel the urge that a dog might to bark at the mailman. I know. And you would too. feel that me urge correct too, Sierra Barry. Teddy is like, I think Teddy is, is like, maybe he's even taking the hat off. He's like, and he's looking at you like a like a uh, like a Labrador would from someone just coming into their home, mm -hmm. <laughs> just like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. When you go into Willis, you will be escorted by one of my soldiers. When you go in and interview people, when you do any conducting of any sort of autopsies, anything of the sort, when you go into people's houses that are now deceased, you will have escorts. This is, of course, for your own safety, as we do not know what is out there or what is going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, can I ask, what's your business in all of this? Why were you put on this job, Agent Harris? Oh, well, dear. aside from me being the <laughs> highest ranking officer uh, in the state, and this being my jurisdiction, this state, I am put in charge here because while you were sleeping, I was on the ground getting pictures, finding the dead, compiling the dead, and answering any questions and covering up anything that the media might like to blow out of proportion. Well, Mr. Booker, super fun. let's get one thing straight. My job here is not to be nice and is not to be your friend. My job here is national security. And whatever this is, is absolutely a threat to our national security. Well, don't you worry, Agent Harris, because the four of us, we are ardent patriots. We are here to defend the home of the brave, the land of the free, and the bunker of the teddy. So don't you worry. Ah, uh, you're the bunker child. What gave it away? Well, that <laughs> makes it all make sense, doesn't it? <laughs> um, great. Um, Agent Kaplan, you will be allowed to carry your firearms with you on the premises, but the safety is to be kept on at all times. Is that understood? Who are you talking to? I'm Agent Burger. Jeff <laughs> Burger. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, right. And he looks at the name tag, and it's like Jeff Burger, but it's like scribbled in. <laughs> on there. <laughs> Hello, my name is. Listen, Portman was supposed to take care of this. All right. 
Kaplan's some other guy who's working for this dude somewhere else. Well, I believe, uh, Kaplan, that uh, you'll be uh, glad to know that uh, one of your fellow companions is actually on the ground here with us. Maybe you'll be able to catch up with him. Uh, Lieutenant Michael? <gasps> yes, he's at uh, blockade number seven. Hold up, I need a timeout here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> so, um, this dude Quick, just safe knows word? I'm David Kaplan, and, and Portman told me he was going to take care of that, right? D David, he knew that, so when, when this guy contacted you, he knew that you were David Kaplan, right? And he was trying to get you to come in on his side. And then Portman would like cover that up for me, right? And send another David Kaplan. But now yes. he doesn't know. But yes, but okay. he's assuming, right? He's like, something might have gotten mixed up there. Like something, something might not have gotten on track. Like, da like Portman was supposed to make that happen. So I'm realizing Portman fucked up and this dude just knows who I am. And now he's telling me that my boys at blockade seven. Yep. That's your boy, like your buddy, Mike? Like the boy, uh -huh. your boy from back in the day. Oh boy. Oh my that God. That can't be a coincidence. Oh my I don't, God. I don't like this guy yeah. very much. I tell you what. <laughs> uh, Give me a human roll. Could you do it? Yeah, roll? fuck. I don't, me and David Kaplan both don't know how to react right now. <laughs> That's what the fear is about, man. Fuck. The fear is about. <laughs> uh, this season is scary. I'm skilled on a, <laughs> on a personal <laughs> level. Yeah, I liked it when we were fighting demons better. Uh -huh. <laughs> I've been all given these, too much power. I'm all these government agents. I don't want to fucking deal with the bureaucracy. Give me the dog again. Uh, so 56 over 30. Okay. So from what you can tell. From what you can tell, David, it, it it is it is absolutely a coincidence. Like he isn't like smug about it or anything. He just is like he, like he knows of you. You're a special like your special forces. You were a Navy SEAL. You know, like Navy and the Air Force work work together a lot. Um, and he like he got the file on the guy that was transferred over the three special forces guys that were transferred over. And one of them was, was Mike. And he's like, and you know, he just like the way he said it, it shocked you, but it was more matter of factly. It was more like, Oh, well, Lieutenant Mike is at blockade seven. You'll be sure to catch up with him, you know? Mm hmm. But it clocks yeah, it, you like, yeah. So hey. I think I have that second of like, dumbfoundedness on my face and then just like he snaps back and says yeah good to know right well uh, if you have any questions I'm sure the doctors will be able to catch you up on the information that they've already gathered and that'll give you a good starting point when you're ready to head into town when you're ready to start investigating things you let me know but um the clock's ticking it's already Let's see here. I'm going to roll a d10. What time is it? Check what time it is on the 22nd of December. Yeah, that's the day that it was in the photo of the deer. Oh, I don't like it. Yeah. So just to recap, you guys got there so quickly. You know, like you guys were put on the ground immediately. You guys were within airports within 30 minutes. You were put on immediate flights. You got down there. You took a Black Hawk from the hell. You know, like you were transported to the site as fast as possible. So, D10. You'll say that you received the information. We'll say that you received the information an hour after it was taken. So by 10 a.m. ish. By 10 a.m. ish, you had all the information you needed. Shh. Shh. You. They work fast over here, don't they? Okay. Six yes. hours since then. But 
So, you are on the ground. You are on the ground by 4 p.m. You are in the town of Willis, and you are about to get information. I think I'll give a little sneak peek. I think we'll give. I think. I think we'll give you one piece of information sneak before we call tonight. Sneak them, man. Sneak them. We're gonna give sneak you. Sneak them, daddy. We're, we're going long. We're sneak them, daddy. Long. We're doing it. We're doing it. All right. I want Sunglass stuff. Bond. I want stuff. So you guys head over. Uh, so he exits out with his kind of Gestapo soldiers leaving behind him. And as you go back to the room, everybody just kind of goes back to what they're doing. And everybody has such a vigor. They are like, they are driven. They are all trying to figure out what it is. And you notice that most of them are like doctors or mass, like they are people that are part of this, you know, this conglomerate of scientists that are more interested for knowing what is going on than the threat that it may pose, you know? You want to go back over to Dr. Bimmel? I, I absolutely <laughs> said Winnie. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, Doctor Doctor Bimmel. Um, she kind of waltzes back over, and she's she's wearing like um, not, they're not kitten heels. What are they called? They're like kind of pumps. They're not like heels, but like she's a more distinguished older woman, so she's Is still it, wearing. I bet it's a little loafer with like a thick heel. Yeah. That's like right. we'll heel. say that's what it is. Yeah. A little loafer and, with a chunky heel. And she has pantyhose on, right? She's got like she's got like she's very, very distinguished. Pencil skirt. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, Seems at the back. Just, yes. And her hair is like bundled <laughs> up and she has these like thin wire framed glasses on. And she just kind of comes over and she goes, Right. Well, uh, we don't have a lot of time. I should probably catch you up on what I do know. Please. Right. You all also, look at also, your screens. Just... Oh, never mind. I was going to whisper a secret to her. Aurora Borealis. In this part of the country, at this <laughs> time of year, localized entirely within your kitchen. So I'm sliding through a bunch of things, but we're going to stop on one in particular. Once it gets to it. Wait for it. Wait for it. You're getting glimpses. You're getting sneak peeks. While, um, while we're going through, and I'll tell you how to do this more effectively later. Um, while, while we're going through, uh, I was not contacted by Portman, was I, at any point? No. Nope. Do I know what organization has sent me out here? Do Am I under the impression that this is a CIA op? You are under the impression that the CIA has been tapped by the special investigations of the Air Force which supersedes the CIA in this sector. So, Interesting. Okay. yeah. So like as a CIA agent, you have, you, you have a, you have a lot of pull in a lot of places. Sure. This is a national security situation, right? So yeah, like this yeah. would fall under Homeland security, the military, the federal, you know, federal government on a federal level, you know? So like FBI would have more sway here than CIA. Sure. Okay. So, so I, yeah, so I don't, I don't know that I'm working with, I, I don't know that this is potentially a Delta Green operation at this point. From what you can gather, uh, you might think it's a Delta Green operation. That's, that's entirely possible. Except this Jamoke is here at the top of it all. Well, un- similarly, yeah, I, I think that's always I, in the I back did, of my head, but. Mm-hmm. I was not, con- yeah. I was not contacted by this jabroni. Nor, nor by this I. jabroni. <laughs> nor was Everybody's I. Got was mean only names Olivia. for this guy. This jabroni only likes Olivia and and David. Yeah, we well I, which makes me feel like this guy knows how to turn people against each other. He knows mm-hmm. how to set people off balance. Mm-hmm. Luckily, so what, what you see I don't in front have of any you, balance at all. <laughs> would would any of you like to read what these say? I love reading. Go ahead, Campbell. Why don't you read the first kind of snippet, and then we'll jump down to somebody else for each other ones as Winnie, just kidding. Low frequency detections, submarine sensors. At about 1.43 a.m. Central Time, U.S. Navy submarines reported detecting a brief spike 
in extremely low frequency ELF radiation at a frequency around 13. I can't read that little hertz. Each hertz, yeah. Somebody else pick it up. My screen just got blurry. Navy ELF communication stations reported the same. 1.43 a.m. spike. Those are powerful antennae, 15 to 60 kilometers in length, built to broadcast through seawater to receivers on submarines. No ELF transmitter reported sending such signals. The Schumann resonance sensors. At weather research stations around the world, devices called Schumann resonance sensors analyze extremely low frequency waves caused by lightning. Every weather station with a Schumann sensor detect, detected two brief ELF surges separated by only a couple of seconds. Their cause has not been established. Sensors then detected a series of surprisingly powerful surges that implied a series of powerful lightning strikes. Identifying the source. It is typically very difficult for Schumann sensors to identify ELF signal with a lightning strike that caused it. There are about 50 lightning strikes around the world every second. Each pulse of ELF radiation has such a long wavelength that it reaches around the globe many times, overlapping with itself until it fades. The ionosphere constantly resonates with ELF. But the timing and power of these surges made it possible to place their origin in the American Southeast. I know! Is else real? <laughs> so did we just did we just read this? Did we just get this from uh our friend Paula? Yeah, so she she points to it on the big board, right? That she has all the information set up on. And she points to it and she goes, Yes, the low frequency detections. You see at 1.43 a.m. There was a brief spike, followed by the same amount of spikings that occur in torrential thunderstorms, tornadoes, and hurricanes. Right here in Willis. I think what? you mean hurricanes. <laughs> well, what could have caused Hartford, all that? Hartford and Hartford well, what's going and on? If there are elves and space waves flying through the place, I mean... What got it all here? All right. I, so, can you explain this? To, I know I know people, not places. Right. How would you describe ELF signaling? Is that like an earthquake shockwave? Very similar. You see, the, the low... Um, I just lost the page. The they're extremely low frequency radiation so we're talking about a nuclear blast high radiation levels high frequency radiation. radiation we're talking about low levels very very low levels the sort of levels that come off of a lightning strike that are right around it these antennae are designed to pick those radiation waves up We were able to pinpoint it here directly at Willis. It's in this 10 kilometer reading. That's this is where, where we found it's everything. Radiating out from. Yes. Normally, this sort of radiation would occur in the Gulf or at the tip of, uh, of Florida or perhaps in Indonesia where there are tidal waves and, and torrential thunderstorms. That's the sort of place we usually pick this up, not in the north in the southeast of the United States, particularly in the northern region of Alabama. In fact, most hurricanes veer back to the far east on their way up the coast. Is there a meteorologist in this room? You know, we actually don't have a meteorologist. That seems like it'd be helpful. We should probably look into that. And she's like walks <laughs> off with like newfound vigor to like get a meteorologist on the scene. Okay, then when she walks away, I'm going to walk over to her board and, and I want to see anything that she's scribbled in the margins. 
anything that she any anything that she's kind of synthesized from her research. Yep. What am I? Uh, ew, that's bad. What am I rolling? Search. Search. Oh, son of a gun. Uh, seventy-one over fifty-four. Yeah. You know the problem with doctors is that they're they're short. Her handwriting I'm fucking, sounds I can't fucking read her writing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fucking read it. This Damn. either says Aurora Borealis or Adderall thirty milligrams. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you one more piece of information. Okay. Well, then we can 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 I can I inspire that through some storytelling? Can I work sure. with you? Sure. Uh, can I say I can't fucking read this? And I'm, but but something particularly interesting, something that she's got a bunch of circle. I'm gonna rip it off the wall and and look closely at it and get whatever you're bringing at me. Great. The next thing that you see is you see that. Oh, which is attached. I'm just going to show that image too. That's attached to what you just read. So it's like right underneath it and it's showing you how those waves are picked up by the submarines. So you see the antennae and you see the waves kind of going out from the transponders and you can catch it. What in the world? Right. Daphne, you had no idea that submarines were even used for this sort of thing. And I think, I think like all of you are kind of realizing like, oh my God, there's so much about the military that I don't know. There's, there's so much unknown on. here to learn. Your eye Buried also catches. This. Stand by. Oh god, the fucking suspense because my stream <sighs> is like a full ten seconds behind. Yeah, no, the I blue can't. aurora. Who would like to begin our reading? <laughs> I got it. The blue aurora about auroras. An aurora is caused by the interaction of electrons or other charged particles with the magnetosphere. A ground-level burst of high-energy radiation, such as X-rays or gamma rays, could explain the aurora over Alabama, but that is only a hypothesis. Did X-rays cause it? X-rays are generated by stars and other astronomical objects, in nuclear decay, in medical X-ray devices, and in particle accelerators. Most X-ray detectors are built to study astronomical sources but X-rays do not penetrate the Earth's magnetic field, so those detectors are stationed on orbiting satellites. Others are built into large devices that study nuclear processes. None were in position to detect X-rays in Willis. Did gamma rays cause it? Intense gamma ray bursts are generated by nuclear explosions and by lightning. Gamma ray detectors must be calibrated precisely to work at all and none were calibrated to pick up this emission. There were no nuclear explosion at the time of the Willis event. The pilots described a flash of blue-white light. They said it was not the same as lightning, although it was followed by lightning. Either way, the lightning was over within a few seconds. It could not have generated enough gamma rays to lose so many charged particles as to cause an aurora. So there's Aurora Borealis in the sky, and we don't know why. Localized entirely within our kitchen. <laughs> so you look at that moment, you're like, oh my God, I didn't, and you didn't see it coming in. And as you go like and look out the window of like this kind of like HQ, or if you step outside for a second, you look up and lo and behold, there is blue aurora across the fucking sky. Have any of your characters seen the aurora borealis? Nah, I don't think so. I've never been outside Appalachia. No way. Um, I I think I've done a lot of espionage in Europe, and I'm not sure how far north in Europe that could have gotten me, but 
at least as far north as Stockholm. I don't know if they get it there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, yeah. Olivia, give me a 50-50 roll. Give me a 50-50 cool. roll. 51 or higher, you have seen the Aurora Borealis in your travels. 50 or lower, you have not. Nope. 70. Cool. As you guys walk out, you are blown away. You guys have never seen the Aurora Borealis. You've heard of it. You've probably seen it in textbooks or heard heard about it in 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 a, on a National Geographic show or something like that. But you've never seen it. And you look up, and it is just strings, ribbons of blue beauty across the sky. Well, dang, I never seen nothing like that before. I didn't know such pretty lights could wind about the sky as such that's really something here's the weird part it's 4 p.m in the afternoon and you can still see the aurora now that's strange. everybody give me a sanity roll ah! <laughs> the collective like charlie browns the collective and with that, with that we will call it a night <laughs> Wow! Well, we'll come back next time with the roll. Hell. We got a we got a cliffhanger with the uh with the sanity roll. Write down what you guys got. We'll talk about it next time when we come back. Okay. Okay. Azu. For all of you, just me. For all of you watching, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming and checking us out and having a good time with us. We love playing with you. Uh, Cor Cor uh, Cor <laughs> Corvin is like. Oh, she, you, she, you. <laughs> um, oh, shout out to 28 folks hanging out until 11 p.m. Y'all are the mom. So great. Thank hey, you for yeah. going along with us tonight. We love having you here. If you're new to the chat, check out our Patreon. We have access to a, a members only discord that we're always in. We're always having a good time. We have live role play. We have a bunch of fun stuff to do there. We're always chatting and, and gaggling about. We have a we have a role with advantage uh discussion where you get to roll each day for your advantage with advantage to see how your day is going to go and most days it's good and even if it's bad we give you guidance with that so somebody will come through with guidance. somebody will, somebody come, somebody will come through with bardic inspiration or guidance or something to if you are new to goon files and you are new to delta green please go to the youtube and join the patreon come check out season one so that you can get all, you have all of this backlogged content that you can go check out and you get to meet these characters and know them even better. If you aren't new and you are returning, we urge you to think about subscribing. If you don't want to subscribe, give us a follow. If you don't want to follow, that's really mean, but it's all good. Tell your <laughs> friends. Tell your yeah, friends. You can do what, what, uh, what Freddie Wong says on Dungeons and Daddies. is like, <laughs> If you don't want to subscribe, for shame. For shame. <laughs> you will get content on the, you free, lo, you dirty freeloader. <laughs> you dirty freeloader. <laughs> That's okay. All are welcome. If, it's if all good. It, yeah, it's all good. It, and, but what really helps us is word of mouth. If you know people that like DTRPG content, if you know friends that are D&D &D fans, if you know people that like live plays and that sort of thing, if you like sci-fi and X-Files and that sort of like, crazy uh, otherworldly hoarder in the modern era tell them to come check us out new episode airs next monday 8 p.m eastern standard time right here on twitch thank you all of the people who joined for the giveaway thank you everybody who come, came and hang out and tomorrow congratulations to tonight's winner epic fail yeah. <laughs> epic fall for your win for the hard win you brought you brought home the win and tomorrow night, Trevor, tell him what you're in for tomorrow night, my friend. Shoot! Tomorrow night, the boys are back in town. Yeah, Baldur's Boys. Baldur's Boys will be back tomorrow. That's Ned and I playing through Baldur's Gate uh, as the past adventures of Drogar and his new friend Dirge, who has uh, who is totally normal and has never done anything wrong. So come check us out. <laughs> His new friend Dirge, who specific, who uh, 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 suspiciously Drogar has never mentioned in the Stardcast. I wonder why. Wonder why. Uh, oh. There was quite a lot of debacles that and, and tomfoolery that ensued. And, well, uh, well uh, you, if, to be frank, it's not appropriate for Winnie's ears. 
<laughs> that's what it is. Is that okay? So I, Baldur's Boys is amazing because it, it's uh, they the boys play through and really role play through every interaction. And in my mind, it's framed as Drogar telling Winnie a bedtime story of. Um, Winnie, his have I ever event. told you the time the dirge murdered a poor musician? No, no, it wasn't me. <laughs> I was not conscious. If you're not conscious for it, it's not a crime. How did you do it? <laughs> um, well, listen, friends, uh, we are going to call it a night because we all have things to do. But Kay, welcome back, darling. Yay! Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's great to be back. <laughs> And we have her for the rest of it. We got her. We got our claws stuck in her. Lucky you. Oh, also, I will, I will note to everybody who's out there in the chat right now, a quick scheduling update. Yes, So we, we are going to take our mid-season break on April 1st. And then in order to not lose any episodes, we're going to extend. So April 1st will be a week off. And we will play our originally scheduled end date was April 22nd. That will now be April 29th. Yes. Tell your friends. And on April first, uh, I will, uh, I will be doing a probably like a, a midday afternoon stream to give still some content for uh, for that period. Uh, I think there might be a new game on the horizon. Might be might be playing something new. I think I've brought enough democracy to the universe, so I think I'm Never I think right. I'm on to bigger and better things. Great stuff, friends. Thank you all. Hang tight if you want more content. We're going to raid somebody real quick. But otherwise, take your evening and your sanity checks with advantage. <laughs>